During this presentation, you will be shown a simulation of the process of cyclic loading on a long wall. Let's step back to take a good look at how this process works. The process begins as the long wall advances, removing the coal seam or part of it, causing it to redistribute the weight of the overlying strata. The weight of the overlying strata or vertical stress now has to sit somewhere else as the go formation takes place. The weight is moved onto the surrounding competent areas, such as the roof supports, the coal block, and the pillars beside the face and gof. Vertical stress concentrations occur on the long wall face at the solid coal edges of the face and pillars, and a zone then exists where the ground has not fully subsided onto the gof. The weight of the rock in this zone is carried by the solid strata and creates additional loading, referred to as the vertical abutment load. The abutment zone in the front of the face line is within the coal block and is more evident in the gate roads in advance of the face. As the long wall continues to advance, the intermediate mudstone and siltstone will cave or gof. However, this will still leave the higher level sandstone above the supports and the face to form a beam. The beam typically begins over the top of the coal block, extends over the face line and continues over the supports and out into the gof. As the long wall advances, the beam will want to move downward due to gravity and its own weight. This will cause the beam to cantilever on the back of the supports and will therefore be visible to operators due to increased loading and yield on the supports. Whilst this happens, the sandstone will fracture in front of the face just off the vertical and all through the beam structure. This will allow the sandstone to move further down increasing the cantilever. As the rock mass tries to cantilever on supports and we get closer to the vertical fracture line, it will cause fretting at the face as it squeezes the coal at the face line. Once the fracture has occurred and the long wall advances past the fracture line, the sandstone roof will cave, the cantilever effect will stop and stresses on the supports will diminish to normal. This process is referred to as the cyclic loading effect. The stages of periodic weighting are when the weight on the wall builds up to very high levels then drops off quickly. The weight is caused by sandstone bending and the average distance between weightings is 30 meters. Let's have a closer look at the three stages in more detail. First, we have what is referred to as the initial stage. This is when the loads are low and building slowly as the long wall advances whilst the sandstone beam sits on top of the supports. The safe stopping period during this stage is greater than one week and the tolerance for careless mining is high. The next stage is called the subcritical stage and this is when loads are moderate and building whilst the sandstone beam extends beyond the supports and begins to cantilever on the rear of the supports. Safe stopping period is less than eight hours and tolerance for careless mining during this stage is low. The final stage, known as the critical stage, is when the loads are at their highest and the beam is fully cantilevered and forward roof fracture has occurred. The critical stage has a safe stopping period of less than two hours with zero tolerance for careless mining, so all reasonable care should be taken to ensure best practice during operation of the long wall. Roof falls typically occur when the long wall moves too slow or not at all during the critical stage of awaiting. Now that we understand the concept of weighting, we can appreciate the importance of keeping the wall moving as an advancing wall limits the amount of lost production, downtime and the potential for injury.